you here. This is a very impromptu pop up uh, exhibition of paintings of my mother's garden in Paulusganj uh, in Bihar on the border of Nepal, which is my childhood home. And I need please to hold on to something which is very precious to me my childhood, a vanishing lifestyle, and also hope for the future. Because during the lockdown, what I saw was uh, despair and hunger. And yet, when I was in my parents' garden in Forbesdunge, I saw the monsoon bring new life to every tree, every shrub, every flower. And also small little rituals which were sort of timeless. Things like the caretaker who had brought me up, uh, snapping his fingers, then plucking the leaves from a tulsi plant, just because he wanted to warn the tulsi that we were breaking some leaves for the channel. And uh, these things, just brought a sense of normalcy and hope that what is what dies will be born again. And that's what I'm going to share with all of you again at the moment that we are all feeling that everything is in a stage of flux. That there is joy, there is hope, and there is life. And what will die will be born again. It's amazing. I, I, I relive this whole moment with her. My memories too. You were mine, not hers, but I really, really, I've seen them hundreds of, hundreds of times, but I don't get tired. They are fantastic. For residents, as a little kid, maybe eight, nine years old, and so I've seen this place and I know the family very well. So I can identify with all the things I and I would like to read the story as she wrote from a book. And I can identify with all the characters that she has painted here. And it's really, really interesting. And the colors she is used are so nice because it brings, it makes the whole thing so happy and nice and all that. Um, it's very, 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 very nice. For me, it's a very personal uh, journey. So it's been very, very डिजाइनिंग है ये अपने आप में एक बहुत मैं कहूँगा कि एक उसका बड़ा एक सिग्निफिकेंट रोल है क्योंकि हम ही जनरली एज ए आर्टिस्ट मुझे भी ऐसा लगता है कि हम कोई भी ऐसा एलिमेंट जब चूज करते हैं जो अपार्ट फ्रॉम आपका एक आर्ट ऑब्जेक्ट होता है या मान लीजिए जो डिस्प्ले हम कर रहे हैं उसके अलावा वो कहीं किसी उसको आर्ट के एस्थेटिक्स को कहीं ना कहीं नहीं बिगाड़े लेकिन यहाँ पर जो हम देखते हैं जो स्पेस बनाए जो गार्डन स्पेस ने कंसीव किया है उसको मैनिफेस्ट किया है तो ये एक मोर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग से मैनिफेस्टेशन है और बड़ा सटीक मैनिफेस्टेशन एक खूबसूरत मैनिफेस्टेशन है जो यहाँ पर है या जो यहाँ पर है वो बाहर भी आता है तो स्पेस मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा और जैसा आपने कहा कि सुमन जी ने उसको बनाया है तो ऐसे लोगों की तो बहुत जरूरत है This is a book that I made of the paintings and I wrote a little story along with that and that was suggested to me by a friend who said that the paintings look like an illuminated manuscript. Mm -hmm. Her name is Navina Haider and she lives in New York and she looks at manuscripts mm -hmm. all the time. So inspired by that I joined the Center for Bookmaking Arts in New York and uh, learned how to bind, fold and think about book formatting. And finally, a friend of Ram's, who's now become a dear friend of mine, Bill Smith, he's a bookmaker, took over the project. And he and Anthony together designed the book that you see before me. And it'll have many iterations as I go along and learn, uh, because I might turn it into a painting of glass books. I don't know how the work will expand, but this is what you see right now. And this is about family and nature and family.
Welcome to my Fortisgunj garden. This is an exhibition of watercolors that I made during the lockdown to share home. I'm an outsider to the art world, but when I was in my childhood home in Fortisgunj, in the middle of the lockdown, struck down by despair, and looking at the hunger and disease and death outside the walls of my home, I felt the world was coming to an end. But inside my home, I was with my family and we had a garden and the monsoon came. We all got COVID and we recovered. Also, the monsoon brought new life to the garden and I had an epiphany. I realized that what dies is born again. So I wanted to share this with all of you at the moment where we feel our world is vanishing, but everything that dies is born again. And it's up to us how we bring life to it. Just as the five of us, my parents and three siblings, brought life to our old abandoned house during the COVID time when we lived together and mended broken doors, uh, painted walls, dusted books, found embroidered pieces, and through our relationships and the garden, found life. Welcome to my exhibition of watercolors. Listen to the murmur of the wind, touch the truth of the rain, and be reminded of the cycle of life. Gloria Steinem calls my exhibition and my paintings a call to action. This panel is a collection of paintings about how I used to start my day in Holbis Gunch. Every morning, my sister and I would take a walk around the house, just looking at not just the trees and the plants and the sky and the sun, but also the spirits of our ancestors. A young woman in a magenta sari would come to sweep away the leaves, and she and my father would talk to each other in our native dialect of Marwari, a language that she knew because her family had migrated with my family to the green fields of Bihar from Rajasthan to escape the famine. And my family set up rice factories and her family worked with mine. And till today, there's still a bond and a relationship. Also, the old caretakers who had grown up with would wake up in the morning and walk in the garden to see which fruits were ripe and they would bring the fruits in for our morning breakfast. That's how the day began. Our garden gates are always open. My mother says that the house belongs as much to the squirrels and the rabbits and the mongoose as to us. So we should not shut them out or shut us in. We have a ritual, which I noticed for the first time in my life. Uh, the old family caretaker would go to the tulsi plant every morning and pluck a few leaves to make shagnamrit. Uh, and before plucking the leaves of the sacred tulsi plant, he would snap his fingers. And I asked him, I said, Bahadur, why do you snap your fingers? And he said, I'm telling the tulsi plant that I'm going to pluck a few leaves. His wife, Shanti, would light a little lamp and always put it in the brick alcove to make us realize how much we love this Tulsi plant. This is the hand pump that brought water, drinking water to our house. My mother does not believe in plastic bottled water, which comes from hundreds of miles away. And this is the same mango tree, which shelters the hand pump where I skinned my knees 50 years ago. Everything has a memory. And as we sat together in the old library, my parents, my mother, my brother and I, suddenly the house began to come alive week after week, month after month, during the long lockdown, because we dusted the shelves, we stitched the embroidery, we cleaned and we talked. And I realized that a home which is neglected because children have moved away, can come alive because it's up to us people. After 40 years, in the dusty library, I found an old school drawing book. 
two broken brushes and six poster paints and I decided I would paint this lifestyle that I had forgotten. I didn't know how, I had not touched a brush or painted or even drawn since I left my art classes in high school. And then I was thinking, how do I capture what I saw around me? I was very, very crushed in that moment because my father had a heart attack, he was recovering, the entire family had COVID. Outside the walls of my home, there was disease, there was death. Some of my friends had been arrested. Uh, there was uh, kids in the red light area who didn't have food. They were sent back from school and my heart was grieving. But the monsoon came and I took a walk in the rain and something magical happened because I met 16 creatures on that walk in my mother's garden. Cats and caterpillars, butterflies and dragonflies, squirrels and snails and everything was bursting with life and I painted it all into this painting and also I realized that the rain is just for all of us bringing new life. Sit down in the garden to write your our memoirs. We want to sit in the garden and write because it evokes so many memories and spirits. But we want to get it done before the mosquitoes come out in the evening. Slowly as the day progresses, I go up to the terrace to take a break. and watch Shanti dry the clothes on the clothes line and I like to watch the trains come and go which are on the station just across the road. I see that the small barber shop which has just popped up during the lockdown to cut people's hair has opened and people have created an ecosystem, a whole universe around that barber shop. The street musician is here with his harmonium and the vegetable seller is here with her cart and there is a girl who is buying something and there's even an ice cream vendor. It is so interesting to see these small signs of human life continuing. And Jamila Bua's shop is open also for business, selling water and other small things for the odd railway passenger, as is the palm shop. The palm shop is the center of social life in our village where everybody comes to buy palm and also there's a little bit of a shrine under a tree where people go and make offerings uh, to the god and the tree goddess. There's someone using a kite on a bicycle and again that gives me a sign of life and hope. The Adivasi colony that I can see across the railway tracks is so clean. I watch the Adivasi families go about their daily rituals, cleaning the cattle, uh, threshing the wheat and talking to each other. It's kind of soothing. A man comes, some kind of a scroll singer. He unfolds a story scroll and sings to the women as they sit on their little chalk. He is listening to him. And their purple saris look so beautiful against the clean color of the mud walls. I look at the trees just nibble a manuscript and thinking about the day that I might be able to leave and the day when the lockdown will be over. Uh, there's a man who comes every single day on a cycle with his daughter to take her for a little outing, perhaps to just give her a sense of the outdoors. And these give me such a sense of peace because there's a daily ritual in people living ordinary lives. The unbearable becomes bearable because of the ordinariness of our lives. So our family gets to Ella in the afternoon for our lunch. We eat off the stainless steel thalis engraved with my grandmother's name as the rest of the village prepares to go to sleep for the afternoon siesta. And here we are, everyone, as I can imagine them, in different parts of the house. Someone's in the garden for the afternoon, Someone is sitting and embroidering on the sewing machine. Someone is reading a book after lunch. And this is the universe that we had every afternoon. After lunch, my father would retreat to the TV room and uh, listen to the TV. All of us would sprawl on the big bed uh, as we did that. Some dancing, some reading and some watching TV. 
we found an old family photograph uh, of my sister with a hand on the head because we were being force fed by ubiquitous Bordita milk which would make her strong and which we never liked. He laughed together and then get back to our afternoon routine. My dad and my brother sit down to play carol and my mother sits and watches. I go off for a walk. It is sundown and I go up to just look at the golden light. Shanti is taking the clothes down from the clothes lines and I can see the little Adivasi houses with their little lamps and candles twinkling in the evening sun. Shamim the gardener, Manoj the cook and Bahadur the caretaker decide to prune the Bogunvila tree as the evening sun comes down. And of course, uh, you know, all of us gather on the veranda, dreaming, hoping, thinking about the future. Soon enough, it is night time and we retreat for one last get together under the quilt, all of us reading just before we go to bed. My sister and I share a blanket, cozy from the outside, feeling secure with our family and our garden all around us. My father looks on at the house, which gives out the spirit of peace and the spirit of Gandhi with his companion as they walk out and there are birds which come out taking the spirit of Gandhi, non-violence, ahimsa and peace into the world from this house. I sit inside the room reading an old copy of Little Women, my favourite book because I was so inspired by Joe that I wanted to be a writer. I look out and I see that the trumpet vine has taken over the area outside the house and it's full of fairies and animals and insects and little creatures. This is a self-portrait where I see the future as feminist and their women matter. As I walk in my mother's garden, I realize that what is perishable will only be born again. And this is exactly what Gloria Steinem says about my garden paintings that they are a call to action which should remind us that there is no hierarchy in nature. The world is made up of open doors, there are no fences in nature and people, animals and plants and insects come in all colors, shapes and sizes.